Special Olympics Hawaii is broken down into three different seasons, and we start the year off with our spring season, which runs from February through May. The sports offered in the spring season are powerlifting, which includes a squat, deadlift, and the bench press. And then we have softball, which again includes individual skills, t-ball, coach pitch, and unified softball. We've got swimming, which offers a variety of differences in all four strokes, and then track and field, which has numerous events. Our area and regional games, the qualifiers for our state games, are held usually in April, throughout the entire month. And then our summer games is held Memorial Day weekend, usually at the University of Hawaii. Our next season is the summer season, which runs from June through August. The sports offered are bocce, which includes doubles and unified doubles, five-a-side soccer, and golf. The competition which concludes our summer season is called the Aokaki Classic, which is a two-day event held in Pearl City at Wild District Park, normally on the third weekend of August. The fall season is run from September through December. The sports that we offer during that season are basketball, bowling, which includes singles, doubles, and unified team bowling, which is two Special Olympics athletes and two unified partners together on a team, as well as bocce, again, in a second season. Bocce includes doubles and unified doubles. The reason we offer bocce in a second season is that there are many rural programs which don't have access to bowling lanes, and many athletes don't want to compete in basketball during that time period. The fall season culminates with our state games, which is called the Holiday Classic. The Holiday Classic is normally held on the first weekend of December, and we utilize three military bases to run that event. We use Hickam Air Force Base, the Marine Corps Base at Kaneohe Bay, as well as Pearl Harbor Naval Station. Unified Sports is a program that combines approximately equal numbers of Special Olympics athletes with peer athletes without intellectual disabilities, called Unified Partners, on sports teams for training and competition. All participants, Special Olympics athletes and partners, are generally of similar age and ability. All athletes in this program need to have the necessary skill level to participate in the sport. Unified Sports is an important program because it expands sports opportunities for athletes and partners seeking new challenges. In addition, Unified Sports dramatically increases inclusion in the community by helping to break down barriers that have historically kept people with and without intellectual disabilities apart. At the same time, Unified Sports provides a valuable sport opportunity to individuals who are not presently involved with Special Olympics or other sports programs. Within the Unified Sports philosophy, teams are constructed in such a way as to provide training and competition opportunities that meaningfully challenge and involve all athletes. These opportunities often lead to improved sports skills, higher self-esteem, equal status with peers, and new friendships. Unified Sports was adopted by Special Olympics Incorporated in 1989 to expand sports opportunities for athletes seeking new challenges while dramatically increasing their inclusion in the community. And extensive field testing has demonstrated that the goals of Unified Sports are accomplished when we follow those principles. Within Special Olympics competitions, one of the most important aspects is called divisioning. Divisioning is included to provide all competitors a chance to excel. Within divisioning, we make sure that there are no more than eight athletes or teams per division. And athletes or teams are grouped by their age, by their gender, but most importantly, by their ability level, so that athletes or teams are competing against other teams of similar ability levels. An example of divisioning is the 100 meter dash. When athletes compete in the 100 meter dash at our state games, they're divided by first their age and then their gender, and then we take their times from their area competition scores. And then they're divided up so that we make sure that athletes are competing against other athletes of very similar times based on their entry scores. Another example is team sports, for example within basketball. At the Holiday Classic, we have approximately 20 teams that compete in basketball, and those teams are divided up into four to five divisions, all based on the overall ability level of the team. In Special Olympics, awards are provided for all athletes every time that they compete. At the area level, awards that are given are ribbons, first through eighth place. At the state games, gold, silver, and bronze medals are given to athletes for first, second, and third place within their divisions, and ribbons are used from fourth through eighth place. An athlete who competes but gets disqualified still gets a participation ribbon. Once an athlete actually competes in an event, they all go directly to the awards area, where they get a chance to hear their name called, go up on the award stand with the music playing, and get their appropriate award or ribbon. 
The awards area is always a place of high excitement and a chance for our athletes to get recognized for their abilities and their achievements. Special Olympics Hawaii utilizes the criteria for athlete advancement when selecting athletes for national or world games. Special Olympics Hawaii receives a quota from either the national or world games office and then we use the criteria in the following way. The winner of each division in an event has a chance to advance to the next level of competition. This means that a first place finish does not guarantee advancement, nor is the best athlete in an event guaranteed selection to the next event. The first step is to put the names of all athletes who receive gold medals into the quoted event into a hat. Athletes are chosen to advance by random draw from all the first place finishers. Quite often people get Special Olympics and Paralympics confused, but there's actually quite a number of differences between our organizations. In Special Olympics, all athletes have intellectual disabilities. In Paralympics, they primarily serve people with physical disabilities, although there is a category to serve people with intellectual disabilities as well. In Special Olympics, we provide opportunities for athletes of all ability levels, but in Paralympics, they primarily serve elite athletes. In Special Olympics, there's awards for athletes of all levels and competing all the time for every event. In the Paralympics, the awards generally only go to the top three finishers. And in Special Olympics, we include random selection to the next level of competition so that athletes of different ability levels have the chance to move on to higher levels of competition. But in Paralympics, only the best in the event go to the next level of competition.